so excited to come your way again this hour. We shall be looking at the subject, why deliverance fails. It's a crucial subject that we cannot afford to ignore or to overemphasize. Let's take our bearing from the text, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. It says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walked through dry places seeking rest and find it none. Verse 44. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. 45. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and then enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Wow. What exactly is the scripture saying here? Is Christ against deliverance? No. Is deliverance wrong? No. The emphasis there is that the place was empty. After the deliverance, the place was empty. The place was empty. Now the question is this, what makes the place empty? Why the emptiness and in what form does the emptiness take? Number one, emptiness of the word of God. And don't forget that the word of God is light. In John chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 5, it said, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the light shined in darkness. Talking of the word of God being the light. It said, And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And don't also forget, the Bible says, Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So the more of the word of God you have in you, the more you are in command. But when a man is empty of the word of God, such a man becomes a victim of more demonic affliction and attack. What else is the man empty of? He is empty of the task of the kingdom. Don't forget Jesus Christ said, Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. It's a commandment. Don't forget that when the donkey that Jesus Christ rode upon, the donkey allowed himself to be occupied with the task of the kingdom. He was loosed where he was tied. And don't also forget the story of the Levite. They were under a curse. It was not just the Reuben that were cursed. The Levite were also cursed. But when Moses asked, who is on the Lord's side? Who will do the work of the Lord? When they were ready to be occupied with the task of the master and their liberty from curses was established. Wow. This is so amazing. And number two, don't forget Jesus Christ speaking. He said, The prince of this world came to me and found nothing with me. John chapter 14, verse 30. Which means from time to time, the devil will keep coming back to see if he could find his instrument with us. What are his instrument? Don't forget, the devil has property, pornography, alcoholism. Name them. Anything that has to do with sin and iniquity, the devil will keep coming to find if he will still find those things with us. And not only that, there are some things that have already been dedicated to deity, some things that are dedicated to the devil, to demonic covenant. If we find such things in our houses, if we find such things among our properties, among what we wear, among what we are using, then we become a victim that the devil can, you know, attack one more time. And don't forget the scripture speaking, he said, when our obedience is complete, that is when God will cause disobedience for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. He said, being ready to punish every disobedient when your obedient is complete. So when our obedience is not complete, we open the door for the devil to go and bring seven more terrible demons, you know, to come and occupy us. Then number three, look at what the Bible says here. First Peter chapter 3, verse 13. He said, and who is it that we harm you if you are followers of them, which is good? Which means from this scripture, the Bible is simply saying there are people we must follow. There are things we must follow if we don't want to be harmed by the wicked one. Don't forget, we were in the position of despondency. We are in bondage and captivity because we follow. We follow our fathers in doing some things they were doing which were wrong. Idol worship. Don't forget what God said, Exodus 20 verse 5. He said, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God punishing the children for the sins of their parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. God is simply saying those who worship idol, they are haters of God. And God said, I will not just punish them, 
I will punish their children yet unborn. So if you keep doing what your fathers did that put you in the state of curse, that put you in the state of being possessed by demons or being afflicted by demons and you continue in their act, you become a victim that the devil will possess again and more demons will come to fill your heart, to fill the vacuum you have created and at the end of the day, causing more trouble and calamity in your life. What are we saying? If you send your money to worship idol, well, I'm not worshiping the idol. I only send money for them to do what you know, the other might be have. It's not really me. If you send your money, you are the one that is already worshiping the idol. And some of us will say, yes, no, it's just the festival of our place. Let's be sincere. Who are they worshiping? Is the festival bringing glory to the name of Jesus? Is it Jesus' name they are calling, or the name of a deity of a demon? That will show you that there is a satanic and demonic undertone. You are worshipping devil. You are worshipping demon. No wonder Christ was speaking in the book of Mark chapter 7 verse 13. He said, they make the word of God of none effect. Why? He said, because of the tradition and the culture of their fathers. They make the word of God of none effect because of their tradition and the culture of their fathers. As long as we keep following culture and traditions, and we keep explaining it away and we say it doesn't matter the influence of these demonic forces will never be far from us have you forgotten the story of daniel in babylon he refused to eat the food that was dedicated to the babylonian god because he knew that each time he sacrificed those animals it has been sacrificed already to a deity to a god and he said no no, no i'm not going to partake of this and that was why he said i will not defy myself by eating the food that is sacrificing to this deity and to this idol. And when he did that, we could see that God kept him, God preserved him, God promoted him, and he became a transgenerational blessing. That three kings sought for his counsel and for his aid in their own time. He became a transgenerational blessing just because they followed the living God. I pray for you that may your life bring glory to the name of Jehovah. May generations here unborn celebrate God because of your life. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and His countenance shine upon you. Till we see you again, God bless you for now.